You didn't say that you condemn white supremacy. I'm not I'm not going to recite some catechism for you. I'm against vicious racial discrimination in this country. So I'm not pledging allegiance to your new religion of modern wokeism, which absolutely fits the, fits the test. I'm not going to bend the knee to your religion. I'm sorry. I'm not asking you to bend the knee to mine and I'm not going to bend the knee to yours. But do I condemn vicious racial discrimination? Yes, I do. Am I going to play your silly game of gotcha? No, I'm not. And frankly, this is why people have lost trust. And I know you're going to go print the headline tomorrow. I already know this. We already know how your game works. Vivek Ramaswamy refuses to condemn white supremacy because you asked a stupid question. Man, we got to talk about Vivek Ramaswamy. I probably said his name wrong, but who cares? We all know who he is because we see how he's destroying these reporters, how he's hitting straight punchline after punchline after punchline. I have really, this man has really, really grown on to me, y'all. Out of all the presidential candidates, this dude's got a mouthpiece. He's the only one that straight up just body slams the hell out of the reporters. And it's something that we've seen many times before when Trump was in office. The same tactic that they used of trying to get someone to, to disembowel white supremacy or are you racist and all that. Like Trump did over 13 different times, Vivek Ramaswamy took his notes and he soaked them up and he came with ammunition ready for these ridiculous, nonsensical ass questions. The man is destroying fake news media every single day, and I love it. He's really, really grown on to me. Um, I don't know what his chances are of actually being a president, but what I do know is he's definitely set up himself a strong political career. He should be in office of some sort. But here we are again. He's doing an interview. I think it's Washington Post. The girl ends up telling him, and she's playing this, this game of asking, do you disavow uh, uh, white supremacy and yada, 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 a tactic that we're so familiar with that the media does to a lot of conservatives and Republicans and people of the GOP. Uh, it's the same people that I argue with and go back and forth online all the time uh, of them trying to slip in and play their little pawn games uh, of are you a white supremacist talking piece and oh, blah, 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 blah. We hear it all the time. So I want to go into this interview of him just absolutely destroying this reporter. Fake reporter has said without an iota of proof attached to it. Do you condemn white supremacy and white nationalism? I mean, what this guy, who are you with? Which, which, Washington. Washington, Washington Post. All right. So <laughs> potato, potato. Okay. Of course, I condemn any form of vicious racial discrimination in this country. But I think that the presumption of your question is fundamentally based on a falsehood that that really is the main form of racial discrimination we see in this country today. Institutionalized racism is institutionalized racial discrimination that we see that doesn't come from somehow discriminating against people on the basis of some tenet of white supremacy. It's based on affirmative action. It's based on actually discriminating against people on the color of their skin in a way that's actually institutionalized today. Was there a point in our history at points in our prior national history where there of have course. been vicious forms of anti-black or anti-brown discrimination throughout this country after the Civil War and otherwise? Yes. But you're looking in the rearview mirror and using that to pose a question today that is so far removed from what the reality is in America today. This myth of white supremacy, the closest you can find is Jussie Smollett, <laughs> where you all were actually speaking of trust in the media, jumping up and down over some false narrative, the best way you're able to find your best instance of white supremacy was a guy who was actually paying his other fellow people to be actually staging something that didn't happen. And so stop picking on this farce of some figment that exists at some infinitesimal... Let me pause it right there. Man, that boy dropping straight facts. He just, she, she just straight body slammed her is what you just witnessed. He brought up and tied it back in with Mr. Juicy Smollett, which we all know fake news media... The, the journalism that has died a long decades ago, lying to the American people, they want to condemn and try to get him to disavow white supremacy, but completely ignore what is clearly racist as hell and that the media pubbed and, and made him out to be the, the, the queen of uh, all victims of some type of hate crime in Chicago with Juicy Smollett. We all remember the Juicy Smollett thing. No, there ain't but two MAGA supporters, and that's Kanye West and maybe some other random guy in Chicago. And two in the morning in cold-ass Chicago, they got Make America Great Again hats on and just pointed out, get, let me backtrack. <laughs> I'll make sure. Juicy Smollett. <laughs> I got to watch what I say on this damn internet. Get beat up. Y'all know the story. It's ridiculous, man. But we don't hear nothing from the media of them coming back and correcting their wrongs. 
coming back and correcting that, hey, we, we got this wrong. We pubbed somebody that was wrong that did actually fake the hate crime and, and hired two big dumbass Nigerians to fake and act like they beat them up. I mean, you can't make this shit up, man. Only small fringe of the American public today to open our eyes to the actual real threats that we face. And I think that it's frankly questions and framings like that that has caused the American public to lose all trust in the mainstream media. I'm sorry to say for good reason. You didn't say that you condemn white supremacy. I'm not I'm not going to recite some catechism for you. I'm against vicious racial discrimination in this country. So I'm not pledging allegiance to your new religion of modern wokeism, which absolutely fits, fits the test. I'm not going to bend the knee to your religion. I'm sorry. I'm not asking you to bend the knee to mine and I'm not going to bend the knee to yours. But do I condemn vicious racial discrimination? Of course. Yes, I do. Am I going to play your silly game of gotcha? No, I'm not. And frankly, this is why people have lost trust. And I know you're going to go print the headline tomorrow. I already know this. We already know how your game works. Vivek Ramaswamy refuses to condemn white supremacy because you asked a stupid question. The reality is I condemn vicious racial discrimination in this country, but the kind of vicious and systematic racial discrimination we see today is discrimination on the basis of race in a very different direction. You want to know what the best way is to end discrimination on the basis of race? Stop discriminating on the basis of race. And that's facts. I'm going to stop it right there. Everything he said, um, it's, it's, it's what most Americans believe and feel. Not this wokeism where only one group of shade of people can only be racist and you got to disavow it and they can, oh, only, only white folks can be racist. That, man, we see it. I just did a video on Dr. Umar. I hate putting that doctor word on the front of his name, but I just did a video on him, of him condemning and getting on another black guy for falling in love with a white woman. But all of the wokeism, the liberals, the white liberals and the black liberals and liberals of a kind are under the comments. I read them even when I go to the liberal pages. The video went viral. All of them said, oh, black folks can't be racist. Dr. Mo Dr. Umar can't be racist. What he's saying is they've literally gone backwards. They've become the very thing that they once hated. And it's this ideology that I just don't understand why people can't see it. Well, it's not rocket science i mean this is unbelievable we are in this point in in this country in this decade this this century that we are people are just i can't even it's like a mental back, backflip talking about it i mean we all know affirmative action is racism you're discriminating on people based off their color of their skin <laughs> that's discrimination stop discriminating on asian people Stop discriminating on anybody because of the color of their skin. You can fall in love with anybody. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. You should be able to work anywhere, you know, regardless of if you have more white folks or Asian or Indian or black, blah, blah, blah. It should, nothing should be based off the color of skin. But here we are today. We have people that have become the very thing that they claim that they once hated. Now they preach it and they push separatism. Now they believe that, it, oh, we have to preserve the race. You should hear them. That used to be white supremacist talking to, talking points. That used to be racist talking points. But we literally see it today, people online of all shades of color that adopt this ideology, this, this progressive, which is nothing but regressive-ism, uh, pushing this bull crap. Now they preach separatism. Now they preach discriminating on people. And they seem to think that they're, they're not wrong, that they can't be racist because, oh, we don't have the power to be racist. But every time I give him the same example, if the white man owns a business and he says, I ain't hiring no black folks at all, that's racist. That's discriminating on people because of the color of their skin. If a black man owns a business, he says, I ain't hiring no white folks. That's racist. That's discriminating on someone off the basis of the color of their skin. I don't want to hear this all oh, power. And that's the thing. I'm going to end it with this. I don't want to get long winded with this because this is very irritating. Uh, Black folks, that you black liberals that land on my page, you guys always say, we don't have the power structure. Yes, we do. It is 2024 now. We own businesses. We have corporations. We have Fortune 500 companies. The list goes on. We're in positions of power politically, from judges to police officers, you name it. Yes, we do. Stop going off of this narrative, this ideology that you have adopted. That comes from a white liberal named Patricia, a sociologist named Patricia. You can look it up yourself. Privilege to power. Stop adopting this stuff and look yourself in the mirror and use some common sense and stop discriminating on people because of the color of their skin. Stop being racist. With that being said, let me hear what y'all's thoughts are. I don't want to get too long-winded. 
because I probably can make two or three different videos just on this subject. Um, for those that are new to the channel, thank you for landing on the channel, supporting and watching it to this point. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified every time I put out some more fire and brimstone commentary, AKA mean tweet commentary. And everybody else, I love y'all. Thank y'all. It's your boy, Craig Long 45. You can't make this shit up. I'm out. Peace. Yeah, wait. <laughs> Oh, no, no, don't get into the head. You're old. 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 You